Stay informed with breaking news alerts. Download the new CBN News app. Go to cbnnews.com slash app. Hey there, I'm John Jessup. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to our channel for more news and information from a Christian perspective. In the midst of the coronavirus crisis, millions of people in the U.S. face hunger like never before. Operation Blessing's hunger relief partner, Outreach for Christ, knew these seniors had nowhere to turn for groceries. A lot of them don't have their children to take care of them or bring them things. If it weren't for us, I don't think anybody else would be doing it. People receiving food and household goods were grateful to God and the partners of Operation Blessing. It is very awesome to see God's hand in everything and seeing God working. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's not even a big enough word. When you partner with CBN, you rescue children and adults from despair, and you give them a promising future. Even if you're not able to go on a mission trip or go do the delivering of the groceries, if you had a part in it, you went there, you did it. Please watch for this mailing and remember to send in your pledge. When we all come together to help, Miracles happen. Friday, May 29th, a night of encouragement, of worship, a night of promise, featuring Michael W. Smith, Pat Robertson, Mike Huckabee, Kathy Lee Gifford, Don Moen, Joyce Meyer, Jonathan Kahn, and more. Hosted by Jonathan Burness and Gordon Robertson. Be informed, be encouraged, and be a blessing to Israel. On Friday, May 29th, watch A Night of Promise on the CBN Family app or the CBN News Channel. Before the COVID-19 pandemic hit, Grandma Navarre had earned money selling prepared food near her home in Bangkok. But then the park where she sold food shut down. People stopped buying. I lost all of my customers. Soon, Grandma was down to her last 20 cents. My grandson told me he was very hungry. I had to be strong. Then Operation Blessing came to Grandma's community with food packs filled with rice, noodles, cooking oil, canned fish, and milk. I thank everyone who supports Operation Blessing. People around the world need your help. 
When you partner with CBN, you rescue children and adults from despair, and you give them a promising future. Please watch for this mailing and remember to send in your pledge. When we all come together to help, miracles happen. Friday, May 29th, a night of encouragement, of worship, a night of promise, featuring Michael W. Smith, Pat Robertson, Mike Huckabee, Kathy Lee Gifford, Don Mullen, Joyce Meyer, Jonathan Kahn, and more. Hosted by Jonathan Burness and Gordon Robertson. Be informed, be encouraged, and be a blessing to Israel. On Friday, May 29th, watch A Night of Promise on the CBN Family app or the CBN News Channel.
In the midst of the coronavirus crisis, millions of people in the U.S. face hunger like never before. Operation Blessing's hunger relief partner, Outreach for Christ, knew these seniors had nowhere to turn for groceries. A lot of them don't have their children to take care of them or bring them things. If it weren't for us, I don't think anybody else would be doing it. People receiving food and household goods were grateful to God and the partners of Operation Blessing. It is very awesome to see God's hand in everything and seeing God working. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's not even a big enough word. When you partner with CBN, you rescue children and adults from despair, and you give them a promising future. Even if you're not able to go on a mission trip or go do the delivering of the groceries, if you had a part in it, you went there, you did it. Please watch for this mailing and remember to send in your pledge. When we all come together to help, miracles happen. Friday, May 29th, a night of encouragement, of worship, a night of promise, featuring Michael W. Smith, Pat Robertson, Mike Huckabee, Kathy Lee Gifford, Don Moen, Joyce Meyer, Jonathan Kahn, and more. Hosted by Jonathan Burness and Gordon Robertson. Be informed, be encouraged, and be a blessing to Israel. On Friday, May 29th, watch A Night of Promise on the CBN Family app or the CBN News Channel. Before the COVID-19 pandemic hit, Grandma Navarre had earned money selling prepared food near her home in Bangkok. But then the park where she sold food shut down. People stopped buying. I lost all of my customers. Soon, Grandma was down to her last 20 cents. My grandson told me he was very hungry. I had to be strong. Then Operation Blessing came to Grandma's community with food packs filled with rice, noodles, cooking oil, canned fish, and milk. I thank everyone who supports Operation Blessing. People around the world need your help. When you partner with CBN, you rescue children and adults from despair, and you give them a promising future. Please watch for this mailing and remember to send in your pledge. When we all come together to help, miracles happen. Friday, May 29th, a night of encouragement, of worship, a night of promise, featuring Michael W. Smith, Pat Robertson, Mike Huckabee, Kathy Lee Gifford, Don Moen, Joyce Meyer, Jonathan Kahn, and more. Hosted by Jonathan Burness and Gordon Robertson. Be informed, be encouraged, and be a blessing to Israel. On Friday, May 29th, watch A Night of Promise on the CBN Family app or the CBN News Channel. Hey there, I'm John Jessup. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to our channel for more news and information from a Christian perspective. Hey, high school seniors of the class of 
class of 2020. My name is David Crowder, and I want to be the first to welcome you guys to the National Senior Send-Off. And it's my prayer that for all you seniors and, and, and all the families that are watching on this simulcast, that you'll leave inspired and super encouraged about the future. Uh, this is an amazing moment to look backwards. Um, what you've done is significant. It's a pivotal moment of your life, and to think of all the people that God has put in your path and next to you to walk with you on this journey is pretty spectacular to look backwards and be thankful and grateful for that as well uh, to consider what you're about to leverage this little breath called life toward. Um, and that's an amazing thing to be able to do in this moment as well. So anyway, please welcome to the National Senior Send-Off and it's a privilege to be with you guys on the simulcast. Good evening. I want to join David Crowder in welcoming you to the National Senior Sendoff. I'm Andrew Haas, and it has been my great honor and privilege to follow the call of God and serve the students and families here at Faith Christian Academy in Arvada, Colorado for the past 24 years. I've been a teacher, a coach, an athletic director, and dean of students, a high school principal, and currently I'm the superintendent of our school. And over the years, I've seen thousands of students graduate from our school but I never could have imagined the end of a school year like this one. Seniors, I know that the conclusion of your high school career has been indelibly altered in such a manner that we may sympathize, but no one can empathize with you because none of us have shared your experience. So it's for that very reason that the National Senior Sendoff has been created to encourage and inspire you. It is our gift to you, a small token of our love for you. This evening, you will hear messages from several people, all wanting you to know that you are loved. Although we realize that much of what you are anticipating for the conclusion of your senior year has been lost, tonight, we are focusing on a message of hope. First and foremost, we have the unshakable hope rooted in the promises of Jesus Christ to everyone who believes in him. In addition, we have great faith and hope in the plan that God has for each senior watching tonight. Some of you seniors, you may be alone tonight. Others, you're together with loving family members, but every single one of you is seen by God. He knew this moment of your life before the creation of the world. You have been uniquely gifted with a purpose designed by God specifically for you as you consecrate everything you do as an act of worship to him. And tonight, we have some amazing guests who want to encourage you. So let's listen to what they have to say. Hi, I'm Kathy Brandell, president of the National Day of Prayer Task Force. Congratulations, class of 2020. We wanna honor and celebrate you tonight. And the best way I know to do that is to pray for you. So please join us now. Lord Jesus, thank you for the class of 2020. Thank you for their experiences, their education, their gifts, their talents that you have poured into them as their creator, as the God who was, who knit them together in their mother's womb. And Lord, as the God who is right now, who is celebrating with us, wrap them in your presence right now, Lord, even as they are maybe feeling lost um, for the things they didn't get to do, or we're looking forward to show them that greater things are to come because as the God who is to come, you're already in their future. Lord, you design their destiny. You are the author of their days. And so show them, Lord, how you can do immeasurably more, way beyond anything they could ever ask or imagine. Lord, be their strength and their shield, be their rest and their refuge. Lord, draw them nearer to you in your word, in your will, in your ways. Lord, wrap them now in your love, in your delight, in your celebration of what they've done, where they are, and where you're taking them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey, what's up class of 2020? This is Toby Mack and I know this year has been different. I know you guys were looking forward to a graduation and now you're probably doing the drive-through graduation. 
I know that uh, you probably didn't get a prom. You probably didn't get, I know you didn't get spring sports. Um, everything's changed, but where there's change and where there's hard times, there is God. Uh, there is a God that will get us through it. And uh, as you move out and hopefully go to college in the fall or take on a job or whatever you do, just remember, um, one thing I always tell everybody is the most important thing you can possibly do is get strong people around you. I know that that sounds so obvious, but so many times the people we pick to do life with change who we are. And that could either be taking us deeper into God or pulling us away from him. So choose wisely the people you hang out with next year. And uh, looking forward to seeing what you guys do. Go change the world. What's going on, class of 2020? Don't mind this quarantine scruff. Uh, my name is Prince Mukamara with the Las Vegas Raiders, and I just want to congratulate you and encourage you as you embark on this new journey to college. Um, I know a lot of verses and phrases are getting thrown your way because of the questions you've been asking, like, why did COVID-19 have to affect my senior year out of everybody's year? Why did it affect my senior sports? senior prom, senior everything. And I just want to encourage you and say, embrace those cliches, right? Like I broke my foot my first year in, in the league. I didn't get drafted where I wanted to. And someone told me Romans 828, that for all things work for the good of those who love God and it's called according to his purpose. And I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. And guess what? Later that year, we won the Super Bowl. Hi, I'm Auburn Monroe and I play softball for Team USA and I just want to congratulate y'all on graduating. I know this is a huge deal, but I know it's been kind of a tough time and it's been tricky and there may be some unmet expectations and just um, things that you may have missed out on and I know that that can be frustrating, but I also know my favorite Bible verse is Esther 414. Perhaps this is the moment for which you have been created. So I know that each and every one of you, um, that you've been created for this moment, even though it's trying and unpredictable and unknown, you've been created to handle this, okay? And you've also been created for the next great moment that's gonna come, that um, you're, you've been created for this next big chapter of college or whatever you have coming next, okay? So I just wanna encourage you guys to lean in and just find a way to enjoy this time and just really realize that God totally has you in the palm of his hand. Congratulations. Hey class of 2020, it's Bethany Hamilton. My life has been such a whirlwind since I finished school in 2008. Surf contests, movies, and now being a wife and a mom, so much has changed. And no doubt there's been a lot of challenge along the way. I always cling to verse John 16, 33. In me you will have peace, in the world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. So when you guys face trouble, remember that verse and know that God has already overcome the world on your behalf, and that is something you can take hope in on a daily basis. So I want you to know that with God you can be unstoppable as you grow into adult life and rock it. Aloha! Hey class of 2020, my name is Jason Adam. I'm a pitcher with the Chicago Cubs. And I just want to take a quick second and congratulate you guys on graduating in the midst of this pandemic. I cannot imagine what it's been like going through your senior year in the middle of all this chaos. Um, and I also want to encourage and challenge you guys. I want to encourage you guys that God promises in Romans 8, 28, that he works all things together for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose. So we, we can trust the promise that even though this pandemic is bad, it's terrible, and I hate that you guys are missing out on some really fun stuff your senior year, he will use it for good, for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose, which is us as fellow Christians. And in that, I wanna challenge you to be the light of Christ, to be the light for that person who's in a really dark place, who lost their job, who this is affecting their college careers. All, there's a lot of people who are really struggling right now. And as Christians, we can be the light for those people that so badly need it. What's up? My name is Austin. This is my wife, Erica Carr. I'm a wide receiver with the New Orleans Saints. We wanted to give an encouragement to all of you seniors who are graduating. And it's from the book of 1 Corinthians chapter four. Yeah, so as Austin and I were reading uh, 1 Corinthians today, uh, we came across verse six, which just asks a simple question. What do you have that you did not receive? And as we've reflected on um, how easy it is to think about all that we've lost, all the things that have not gone well because of the 
pandemic and, and as you as seniors, maybe you lost a prom or your graduation celebration. And yet it's so easy to think about ourselves in those times, but there's so much that we've been given, so much that we have. And this verse really highlights all the things that we have come from God. What do you have that you did not receive? There's a Scottish pastor, I think 18th century, who's uh, Robert McShane, who said, for every one look at self, take 10 looks at Christ. So we just wanted to encourage you, even amongst trials, tribulations, and things not going as planned, take a look at Christ and all that he's given you. Reflect on the blessings and things that he has poured into your life as you go on to college and beyond. Don't focus on yourself so much. As, as real as the struggles are, turn your eyes to Christ. Look to his promises and all that he's done, and you'll definitely be encouraged. So love you guys. Take care and God bless. What great messages. I know you've been encouraged. In just a few minutes, you are gonna be blessed to hear from fellow senior Gabrielle Odom. But first, I wanna pass along a song you are all familiar with, delivered in a pandemic-proof way by a group of students from right here at Faith Christian Academy. Hey seniors, my name is Mrs. Lamb and I'm a high school music teacher and worship director at Faith Christian Academy. On behalf of all teachers nationwide, whether we've had you for one year or all four years, we want to tell you that you are loved. You are missed. We have missed seeing you in the classroom and in the hallways. We want you to know that you've been prayed for, you've been prayed over, and that God has created you for such a time as this. Tonight, I'm gathered with our seniors from our worship team at Faith Christian High School, and I've had the privilege of worshiping with them and watching them lead our student body in worship every week. And so tonight we want to invite you in to worship with us and to sing this timeless hymn, Amazing Grace. I wish that I could be with y'all. My name is Gabrielle Odom. I am a soon-to-be senior grad of Minnetonka High School here in Minnesota. And so quick shout out to Tonka. I love y'all. I'm so thankful for you. Y'all have shaped me in more ways than you know. And to those of you who are watching, I, like you, did not think that this is how my senior year would end. 
I didn't think that the last four years of hard work, friendship, hardship, and revival would culminate like this. And I'm sure you're sad and feeling the loss and the grief of this bittersweet end. And I just want to remind you real quick that your disappointment is fair, that it makes sense, it's understandable. And even though there might be bigger things than your senior year of high school or whatever people may be telling you, I just want to remind you again that it's okay to grieve the loss of mixed expectation and I'm with you it's okay to be sad I see you I love you and I'm so honored to get to speak on behalf of y'all today I pray I can represent our class well because yes there may be loss these are hard days these are anxious days and this is not fun by no means but we're not gonna dwell there okay instead I want to celebrate y'all I want to charge y'all as we go from here I pray that through your TV, iPhone, computer screen, wherever you may be viewing this from, that you would leave encouraged in your purpose and ultimately that you would leave encountered by the love, truth, holiness, and power of who God is. Because here's what I believe, y'all. I don't think that this is an accident, that this is how we are ending. I'm not surprised at all. I actually believe that before the foundation of the world, that God knew this would be the challenge that our class would walk through together. And I believe that we were built to rise. We are the 9-11 babies. For so many of us, our parents held us as they watched the footage of the Twin Towers come down. And as they faced the reality of the broken and evil world around us, they wondered how to raise us faithfully they wondered how to raise kind kids. We are the elementary kids that lived cluelessly through the 2008 recession. We are the fifth graders that watched the news of the shooting at Sandy Hook Elementary and all of a sudden the reality of the evil and broken world became a little more real to us. We are the middle school kids that were inundated with social media far before we even knew how to wisely handle it. We watched anxiety and depression increase in our classmates and we started to ask the questions of who am I and why am I here? We are the high school kids that walked through the divisive 2016 election year and as our opinions started to form and our values became set in stone, we are the high school kids that we're taught to fight for the things we care about. We fight for the things we're passionate about. So we protest, we host large events to share the gospel, we use our voice. And so now we find ourselves in 2020 as our senior year came way quicker than any of us thought it would. And now we are the class that is graduating in the midst of a global pandemic in a time where we thought we would be celebrating together hand in hand. We are more isolated and alone than ever before and if we're honest, we're a little terrified and just as our parents wondered in 9-11, they are now wondering now how to send us faithfully and how to send off kids that will be different, kids that will be strong and kind and through all of this, the unknown and all class of 2020, we have rise, we are built to rise. We have come out of it all more unified, more passionate, more resilient, more innovative innovative than ever before. We are stronger, we are kinder, we are better. Because this is just what we do, y'all. We rise for such a time as this. We stand up for what matters. We hold on to hope, opportunity, and dreams. We will not repeat the sins of the past generations. We will fight against injustice and care for the vulnerable. We will be better. I'm believing it, y'all. But here's where I plead with you, class of 2020, because I believe with everything in me that the only way we will rise, the only way we will fight, the only way we will be better is by clinging to the person of Jesus Christ. And so if I had last words to say to my class, it would solely be that the gospel changes everything, y'all. And as I look into the world we are being sent into, my hope is not in politics, my hope is not in status, my hope is not in financial security, but my hope is in the person of Jesus Christ alone. And so I'm pleading with y'all to hold tight to the God who created you, the God who loves you, the God who redeems broken things through the cross of Jesus Christ, because that's just what he does. He is good at being God. And so I believe our class could change the world, y'all. I really believe it. I've watched our fire, I've watched our passion, I've watched our hard work, 
But whether if your heart burns spiritually, socially, or politically, you won't be able to effectively change the world unless your world is eternally changed by Jesus Christ first. And I'll say it again that you actually will not be able to effectively change the world unless your world is eternally changed by Jesus Christ first. Drugs, drinking, sex, none of it. Your performance won't save you, y'all. Only Jesus can. And so you're going to hear more about that today. And I'm going to beg you all to hang tight to Jesus because, man, that's where my hope is found. He is my cornerstone and my rock. And as I walked through the halls of a public high school, I had to make a conscious choice to live for the world or to live for God. And it was not easy. There were many days that I felt so weak and it was so hard. And yet, as I would walk through the halls, I would repeatedly, repeatedly say Romans 12, 2, over and over again in my head. And so it is the verse I'm gonna charge y'all with today because in this season, as we are being sent into so much unknown, so many of y'all are asking, what is God's will for my life? And so I wanna tell y'all because Romans 12, two says, do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind because then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing and perfect will. And that is power, y'all. Like, if you want to know what God's will is for your life, what is good and pleasing and perfect for you, you must, one, not conform to the patterns of this world. Be set apart. Be holy. Do not entertain yourselves with the things God went to the cross for. Be transformed by the gospel. Renew your mind by the reading of God's word, and you will know what God's will is for you. So we are class of 2020, clear vision, right? 2020 vision. But the only way we will know God's will and vision for us is by fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. Like he is the author of your life. And for those of you that know him and are called by his name, he has chosen you, he has set you apart. There's so much in store for you. God is purifying you for righteousness sake. He is perfecting you by his grace. And I believe that that he is working all things for his glory and for your good. So let's say no to relative truth and say yes to the truth of God's word. Let's say no to ignorance and start fighting for injustice instead. Let's say no to our sin and say yes to the cross of Jesus Christ. Let's say no to the fears of this world and the fear of man and say yes to fearing God instead. Because I heard it said, y'all, that whoever wants this generation the most will get us. And the reality is that society wants us, social media wants us, politics wants us, achievement wants us. But I believe that the God of the universe wants you so much more. Believe that, y'all, that the God of the universe wants you so much more. And so class, in this crazy season, as we are being launched, let's rise, class of 2020. Hardship and division is not foreign to us. So we put our chin up, we trust in God because we need him. And we rise for such a time as this. We got this, congratulations. I love y'all so much. I pray that we will serve faithfully and I pray that above all else that God will be glorified. Love y'all. Hi seniors, this is Janie Reed from the US Women's Olympic softball team. I just wanted to say congratulations on finishing your senior year and walking into this next chapter of your life. I wanted to share with you a verse that changed my life in college seven years ago and it's 1 Peter 2.9 and it says, for you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession so that you may proclaim the praises of the one who called you out of darkness and into his marvelous light. And if you belong to Jesus, that's you. And I just want to urge you to remember who you are as you go into this next chapter. I always tell kids, if you don't know who you are going into college, college is going to tell you who you are. But if we can remember who God says we are and who we belong to, we can be a change agent for the places that we walk into. And so I just hope that this is an amazing night for you but it's also an encouragement to you to walk boldly into wherever god's calling you and to remain his hey everybody i'm matt forte uh former running back for the chicago bears and the new york jets and i want to give a big congratulations and shout out to the class of 2020 that's graduating and i know this is probably not how you want it to graduate but uh sometimes you got to roll with the punches but 
Without further ado, I want to give you my favorite Bible verse, which comes out of Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Now, a lot of you are going different paths. You're going to college or you're going to the military or you're going different ways. And when the road gets shaky, because when it does, it's going to happen. I want you to trust in the Lord with all your heart, but also don't lean on your own understanding, but acknowledge God because then he will make your path straight. And that is a promise in the Bible. It's not just a scripture. It's a promise. So congratulations and follow God. God bless. Hey, class of 2020, it's Peabod here. Man, things changed pretty dramatically when coronavirus hit. And the other crazy thing is you're in for another big change when you start college this fall. You're gonna be completely in charge of your own schedule and you know figuring out what's important to you, all of these big things, and it's super exciting and probably also a little scary. So I just wanted to encourage you to, um, you know, as you head into this new season, Really look for those people and environments that are going to help you keep the faith and, um, you know, stick to the the commitment to your faith that you've made. Um, I think I found when I was in college that um, the more my, my faith became my own, the more um, I could really see how the Lord was supporting me and helping me grow. So um, that's my wish for you. Um, I hope that that guides you as you Pick your friends and your environments and, and all of that good stuff. It's going to be awesome. So um, all that to say, I am really glad that my song Side Hustle is on Congratulations um, because uh, it it might be a little bit of what you're feeling right now. Um, I, I can relate a lot to where you guys are at. So I wish you the best. I'm praying for you all. And I hope that college is just an amazing experience. Um, yeah, love you guys. Good luck. <laughs> Hi, this is Ali Aguilar. I play softball for the U.S. Olympic team. And I just want to share this verse with you high school seniors. Um, it's John 16, 33, and it says, These things I say to you so that you may have peace. In this world you will have tri tribulation, but take heart, I have overcome the world. And I just want to encourage you with that scripture because I think that there's always going to be um, problems and right now with you know se seasons being canceled and not getting to finish your senior year the right way and just all the like stress that it, this season and this um, the season is kind of causing um, I just want to encourage you that we can always have peace in who God is no matter what the tribulation no matter what the circumstance so I just wanted to speak that peace over you guys and I'm just praying that God will meet you right where you're at and even though the circumstances are so uncertain um, that you will have peace in who God is at all times. G'day to you. It's Joel and Luke here with Fakian Country. Yeah, we just wanted to take a moment to, well, first of all, say hello. Yeah. And we know that, uh, you know, your school year has been canceled, uh, proms, graduations, graduations yeah. uh, sports. Yeah. Luke's a big sports guy. Uh, sports have been canceled for you. And so uh, we just want to say uh, our hearts are with you. Yeah. And uh, we're going to make it through it together. And I don't know if you had anything else you no. close out with. Look, we ho uh, hope that these uh, next few months are even under adversary, that, that uh, they're, you're making some significant memories with family. And uh, those friends, uh, they will be there when this, this whole thing uh, passes. And so uh, all the best to you. And uh, hopefully we see you sometime in the near future. So long. Class of 2020, congratulations. Matt Hasselbeck here, former NFL quarterback. Um, wanted to just say congratulations. And if I could give you a little bit of advice, Ecclesiastes 4.12 talks about the power of community, connecting, being together. Two is better than one. Three is even better. And I think that's my advice to you as you move forward. Stay connected to those people that have meant so much right now, but also keep connecting. That's such a key. It's been such a key in my life. Not only connecting with people who are peers, who are friends, but also just connecting up. People who are older and wiser that have been there, done it, maybe made the mistakes that I don't have to make because they've already made them. Whether that's coaches or teachers or just people that are older than you a lot of the time. So that's my advice. Ecclesiastes 4.12 says it really well, but all the best to you guys in the future. Congratulations on your accomplishment and God bless you all. 
Happy 2020 to all you graduates. Happy 2020 to you. God bless you guys. I'm Michael Tate with the Newsboys. And congratulations on finishing high school. What a big deal. It's a big deal, guys. Wish we could have celebrated you this year by walking and a physical you know, ceremony, but COVID-19 came along. Who knew? But nonetheless, you've done something great. If I got any advice for you at all, I may humbly say, it turns out that choices have consequences. So choose wisely. Your future is so important. Uh, life is shorter than you think it is, but eternity is forever. God bless you guys. I love you. See you at a concert very soon. Hi, my name is Greg Steer. I'm the founder of Dare to Share, and I want to thank you so much for tuning in to the National Senior Send-Off, and it is our prayer that you are encouraged by tonight. I'm going to ask you kind of a strange question. Have you ever been absolutely terrified? I remember when I was about nine years old, I was terrified. I was walking to school, about a 10-block walk, uh, and I had a thick jacket on. It was a cold Colorado day. And I remember I could see out of the corner of my eye two German shepherds coming across the street. Their teeth were bared. Their ears were back. I knew they were going to attack. I backed up against the fence, and sure enough, they lunged at me. One went for my arms. One went for my stomach. I was covering my face, holding on to that chain link fence, because I knew if they tore me down to the ground, they probably would kill me. And I'm sure I was screaming and freaking out. I don't really remember. What I do remember is a little old lady named Ma Zemer, probably 80 years old, comes shuffling down the block with a baseball bat and crack, she hits one of these dogs in the head and boom, she hits the other in the head. She stood between me and the danger, swinging that bat and cursing. She was my savior, right? She stood between me and those barking dogs. I want to tell you this tonight. Maybe you're terrified by this pandemic. Maybe you're terrified by some of the implications. God is standing between you and the danger. He is there for you. He is your Savior. And that is the message we really want to communicate tonight because we understand, man, it is such a bummer that I mean, proms have been canceled, graduations have been delayed, your social life has probably come to a stop, and I'm sure you're frustrated. We wanted to do something to encourage you. And as I tell my two kids who are teenagers, you know what? This is a bummer, but you're living out history. You're living out history because something like this has not happened in the United States since 1918 with the great flu epidemic. In other words, this is something you're living out right now that your parents and grandparents have never experienced. You're going to be able to tell your grandkids someday, I survived the great pandemic, the coronavirus of 2020. And hopefully you won't sound like that when you tell them that, all right? But you are living out history. Our prayer, though, is you don't just live out history, but that you're able to make history as a result. And tonight is our gift to you, a gift of encouragement. Matter of fact, when we kind of thought of this, I went to Mr. Haas, who's a superintendent at Faith Christian Academy, and I said, let's do something to bless high school seniors. He said, let's do it. I went to my buddy, Alan Weed, who runs Interlink, a music and media ministry for youth leaders and teenagers, and he said, you know what? Let's do this thing. So we planned it out. We got the word out, and we were blown away at the partners who came on board, the partners right there on the website that came on board to say, yeah, well, let's get the word out. We, we were blown away by the artists who said yes we want to encourage high school seniors by the athletes who said yes we want to encourage high school seniors so our prayer tonight is that you are encouraged and I want to tell you this it's a gift to you it's also a gift to my son you see my son Jeremy Steer is a high school senior right here at Faith Christian Academy and my heart was broken for him because of this situation, and my heart was broken for every high school senior. I'm so proud of my son graduating from uh, FCA, and he's going off to Colorado Christian University where he's going to pursue a psychology degree. I'm so proud of him. I want you to know your parents, your brothers, your sisters are proud of you, and tonight is our gift to you, and we pray that you're encouraged by tonight. Matter of fact, one of the great things about graduating from high school are gifts because we all love to get gifts, right? So I wanna to talk to you, first of all, just for a second about a gift that parents and youth leaders, you can give to your high school senior 
and it's a gift called Congratulations. Now, the music uh, that you've heard tonight, the musicians that you've heard, they have messages, they have music that will encourage you, and it's all part of this Congratulations gift set. So I want to encourage you to, to really let tonight's impact continue on well past tonight. I encourage you, if you can, go to grad 2020 Dot com and get that gift of music for your high school senior. Let them be encouraged tonight and well beyond tonight. Grad2020.com. Seniors, again, I hope you get some amazing gifts. Parents, if you're struggling with what kind of gifts to give to your high school senior, money always works. Money is always a good gift. But give a good gift, and I hope you get some amazing gifts. But I want to tell you tonight that there are three gifts that Jesus Christ himself wants to give you as a graduation gift. Now, I know that sounds kind of weird, but I want you to think of Jesus in a different way. Because many of you have heard he's the son of God, and he is the son of man, and he is. But you know that Jesus was a teacher. Matter of fact, he was called a rabbi, which means teacher. And did you know that most of the disciples that followed Jesus were teenagers when they began to follow Christ? And if you begin to think of them as freshmen in high school when they begin to follow Jesus, about almost four years later, right, they're about to graduate, but then their teacher is crucified. He was illegally arrested. He was crucified. And so the disciples are freaking out. They don't exactly know what to do. Matter of fact, they're kind of, they're terrified. They're hiding in a room, kind of a shelter in place kind of situations because their graduation plans have been ruined but we see in John chapter 20, verse 21 and 22, Jesus, their teacher, had risen again and suddenly shows up in this room to speak to his graduating class. And here's what Jesus says. Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. And these same three graduation gifts that Jesus gave his disciples, he's giving you tonight. The first gift that Jesus has given you is the gift of peace. He's given you the gift of peace. He said to his disciples, peace be with you. And I think peace is a struggle now for the typical high school senior. As a matter of fact, there was one Pew Research uh, study done just in the month of March, and it said the number one age category for those who are psychologically distressed as a result of this pandemic starts at the age of 18, the age of the typical high school senior. And you may, you may sense that stress. You may sense that frustration. You may be struggling with questions like, hey, am I going to be able to get a job? Or are my parents going to be able to keep their job? Or am I going to be actually be able to go to college in the fall? Or when am I going to get together with my friends? When am I going to be able to kind of get together and hang out with my friends again? And all these may just be just churning around in your mind, in your soul, and creating a depression, a discouragement, an anguish. But in the midst of all that, Jesus shows up and says, peace be with you. And I think a lot of teens, sadly, are turn, turning to suicide. Right now, the number two cause of death in the United States is suicide. I'm fearful that this pandemic is going to drive that stat to the number one slot. Many teens are turning to alcohol or vaping or drugs or whatever because of that depression that's churning in their soul. But Jesus is saying, peace be with you. I remember as a kid, and wanting to know that peace in my soul. See, I don't come from a typical religious, church-going, pew-sitting, hymn-singing family. I come from a family filled with bodybuilding, tobacco chewing, beer drinking, thugs. And that's just the women, sadly. It was a tough family. I was raised in the inner city. Three of my uncles were competitive bodybuilders and street fighters. The fourth one was a bouncer at the toughest bar in Denver. The fifth one was a judo champion and golden gloves boxer. My mom was the only girl in the group, and they were all afraid of her because she could fight. And my family was in constant violence. Matter of fact, on Friday nights, mom used to say, you want to watch cops? And if I said yes, we'd get in the car and follow the cop cars in our neighborhood to the scenes of the crime and watch whatever would happen unfold. The Denver Mafia knew my, nicknamed my uncles the Crazy Brothers. So when the Mafia thinks your family's dysfunctional, 
That's not good. My family was in constant violence inside our house, outside our house. And I remember as a kid in inner city Denver, taking my little red Bible and hiding underneath the kitchen sink with a flashlight. And in the midst of all the yelling and all the fighting, I would just read my Bible because I was looking for peace. I never knew who my biological father was. There was so much angst and anxiety in my family. But underneath that kitchen sink, I found peace. And that's where Jesus, in a sense, met me and transformed my entire life and eventually transform my entire family. And I'm not talking about religion. I'm talking about a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. So I got to ask you this question. Do you have that relationship? Do you know Jesus Christ? I want to share with you the most important message and maybe the reason that God had you turn, tune into this, to this stream tonight. God loves you. God created you to be in a relationship with him. He cares about you so much. But our sins, they separate us from God because he's a pure and holy God. And that sin, that's what brings the anxiety and the pain and the frustration and the hurt. And every bad thing we face in this earth is a result of sin. And those sins could never be removed by good deeds. Religion says, well, turn or try or cry. And if you try hard enough, then you can be reunited with God. But the problem is he's so holy, he's so perfect. He can't be around sin. That sin is a wall between us and a holy God, and it breaks his heart. So 2,000 years ago, God sent his only son, Jesus, into this earth to live the perfect life that we could never live and die the death that we deserve. Jesus died in our place on the cross. He paid the price for sin. And he said the words that would change the course of humanity. It is finished. And he bowed his head and he died. He paid the price for all of our sin. He was buried. Three days later, he rose again. And soon after, he appeared to his disciples and said, peace be with you. And right now, in your living room, in your room, wherever you're at, Jesus wants to appear and say, peace be with you. He's offering you that gift of peace, of eternal life through faith in Jesus Christ. But like with any gift, you must receive it. And so right now, if you've never put your faith in Christ in the silent sanctuary of your soul, you can put your faith in Jesus. You can say these simple, silent words to God. Dear God, I'm a sinner. I messed up. I fall short. But I believe that Jesus died for me paid the price for my sin, rose from the dead. I receive that gift of eternal life through faith right now. If you just said those words in your soul and meant them, if you just put your faith in Christ, you've been born again into God's family, you've entered back into that relationship, and Jesus can genuinely say in your heart, peace be with you. You were saved, not because you said a prayer, but because you trusted in Jesus, the Prince of Peace. We'd love to know who you are. I'd love to help you grow in that relationship. If you just put your faith in Christ, can you text the word Jesus to 27126? Text the word Jesus to 27126, and you'll get seven videos that are going to help you grow in your relationship with Jesus Christ. Jesus gives you tonight as a graduation gift, the gift of peace. Jesus gives you not just a gift of peace. He gives you the gift of purpose. He says this, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. So Jesus has given us not just peace, but a purpose. And that purpose is to share with people the hope that Jesus has given us. You know, if you were doing some online homework in chemistry and somehow miraculously discovered the cure to the coronavirus, you would not keep that cure to yourself. If you knew somebody who had the virus, you would share with them the cure. Not only that, you would go to the hospitals in your community, in your city, and tell all the doctors and nurses the good news that you got the cure to the coronavirus. You would get on a plane, and you would travel the world declaring, I have some good news. I have the cure to the coronavirus. Listen, you don't keep a cure to yourself. You have the cure to something infinitely worse than the coronavirus. And your friends and your family members and your neighbors 
your classmates, your teammates who do not know Jesus are headed somewhere infinitely worse than death. And you have the cure. His name is Jesus Christ. So as you graduate from high school, launched into life, I challenge you to look at yourself as a missionary, as someone who proclaims the good news of Jesus Christ with your life and with your lips. As a matter of fact, this Saturday, there's a global movement called Go 2020, where millions of believers around the world are proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ this Saturday. They want to see a billion people hear the good news of Jesus. And I want to challenge you to take this cause as your own, to go to go2020usa.com and be a part of this movement to share the good news. You may be thinking, man, I, I don't exactly know how to do that. I mean, how do I bring it up? If somebody says it's hot in here, do you say it's hot in hell too? Let me tell you about it. No, don't do that. I've tried it. It's absolutely ineffective, all right? You want to lovingly share with them the good news of Jesus. I work with a ministry called Dare to Share. You can download our Life in Six Words app at the App Store free of charge. And if you, if you can swipe and read, you can share the gospel. There's also a pandemic-proof way of sharing the gospel in there called Audio Stories. Go to your App Store and download Life in Six Words and share that message of peace. Live out your purpose, and that purpose is to share the good news of Jesus Christ. Tonight, Jesus is giving you the gift of peace, the gift of purpose, and finally, he's giving you the gift of his presence. John 20, 21 and 22, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. I want you to imagine all the young disciples there with Jesus breathing on them, which seems kind of awkward. But he says, receive the Holy Spirit. He was imparting to them a gift, the gift of the Holy Spirit. And through the Holy Spirit, Jesus' presence would be with the disciples to the end of the age. And if you put your faith in Christ, the Holy Spirit of God, God himself, dwells within you. Jesus is with you, and his presence gives us confidence and power to face life. No matter what you're facing, no matter what's ahead, you have the presence and power of God with you. I remember once when I was in high school, I was sharing the good news of Jesus with two other high school students at a local shopping mall, and they were making fun of me. Well, my cousin was there, my cousin Eric, who could bench press 550 pounds. He was five foot eight by five foot eight. His legs were so huge that when he walked, his thighs apologized to each other. Pardon me, excuse me, pardon me, excuse me. He was a huge guy and he was a believer in Christ, barely, but he was a believer in Christ and he was listening to these two guys make fun of his little cousin, Greg. So he walks over, pardon me, excuse me, pardon me. And he looks at these guys and he goes, hey, this is my cousin. You're going to want to listen to what he's got to say about going to heaven when you die. Because if you don't listen, you could die. And they're like, we believe! You know, and I, I don't know if they really did. They were just scared to death. And I thought, man, I told Eric, man, I need to take you with me wherever I go. And when I share Christ, if somebody doesn't believe, I'll say, Eric, beat the sin out of them for the glory of God. And then I realized that the maker of heaven and Eric and earth goes with me. So Jesus Christ himself through his Holy Spirit, and I don't need to be afraid, and you don't either. No matter what you're facing, you have God with you. You're not sheltered in place alone. You have the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Jesus himself is with you through his Holy Spirit. These are the three gifts that Jesus gives you tonight. The gift of peace, the gift of purpose, and the gift of his presence. And I have a gift I'd love to give to you as well. It's a poem I wrote it's called To the Class of 2020. There have been times throughout the ages when pain and struggle grew, where darkness reigned in utter terror and hope would not renew. From wars to plagues to pestilence, despair kept mankind down. All expectations for escape were wrestled to the ground. But in the midst of blackest dark, a light would pierce the sky. Hope would rise up in victory and brighten weary eyes. Out from the grave came forth true life. From darkness came pure joy. Humanity would live again. Hope could not be destroyed. 
2,000 years ago or so, the darkness seemed to reign. The Son of God hung on the cross, absorbing all our pain. Nailed to the cross was Jesus, suffering for all our sin. He paid the price with his own blood so we could finally win. Then from the grave came forth true life. From darkness came pure joy. Jesus lives once again. Hope cannot be destroyed. So as we face this global struggle that we deal with every day, let's keep our eyes on Jesus for he will lead the way. No mask will keep us quiet or pandemic keep us down. We will proclaim the good news through Christ we have been found. And like he sent his young disciples with gospel flags unfurled, he sends forth all you graduates to go and change the world. I hope that poem blessed your soul. Congratulations to the graduating class of 2020. And now I'm gonna invite up Reza Zadeh. He's an Iranian born believer in Jesus Christ. He's on staff with Athletes in Action and he happens to be the chaplain for my favorite football team, the Denver Broncos. He's gonna come up and lead you in a commissioning prayer and send you out at the National Senior Sendoff. Well seniors, here we are. It's the end. It's the end of the National Senior Sendoff it's also the end of your high school careers. But yet what oftentimes seems like an end is actually a beginning. But your time as a caterpillar is over. It's time to spread those wings and fly, to fly into the life that God has created for you. The one thing we have to remember is that we were created in the image of God and he created us on purpose and he created us for a purpose. Our prayer is that you would follow him and that you would find the purpose that he created for you to live. You know, we all have an opportunity to make a decision on how we're gonna live our life. And now is the time where we get to decide what are we gonna be? And in a moment, I'm gonna read a benediction prayer that has been used for thousands of years to pray over people, to commission people, and to bless people. And after I read that, I'm gonna ask friends and family if you would stand and, and lay hands on your high school senior, and I will start us off in a prayer. And after I say amen, I encourage you, friends and family, to continue this time of blessing and this time of commissioning and this time of praying. But maybe you're watching this and you're by yourself. There are no friends and family that are with you. I want you to remember what Greg said. You're not alone. That God is with you. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, he is with you in this momentous occasion. And now as we close, I want to remind us of the words of Corey Ten Boom, to never be afraid to entrust an unknown future to a known God. And now let me read this benediction prayer. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face towards you and may he bless you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the gift that this is to be together through technology. I thank you, Lord, for these high school seniors, that every one of us have been created in your image, that we are image bearers of the creator. And that, Lord, you knew us when we were in our mother's womb, that you fashioned us and created us. And again, you created us on purpose and for a purpose. And so by the power of the Holy Spirit, I pray that you would reveal the plans and purposes for which you have created each high school senior that is watching. And Lord, I pray that you would come alongside of them. And that as people are gathered together in living rooms and people that are gathered together just alone with this video, Father, that Lord, every one of us would recognize that you are God, that you've created us. And we have a choice, an opportunity to live for the praise of your glory. So Jesus, we pray that you would continue to lead us and empower us by the power of the Holy Spirit and that we would live for the glory of Jesus and the glory of Jesus alone. And in all these things we pray by saying, Amen.